Well, welcome to uh, Eric's Perspective. Uh, joining us today at M. Hanks Gallery is Phoebe Beasley, renowned artist and friend. Phoebe, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for inviting me. I thought I'd start just by trying to remember how we first met. I, as I recall, I, I know it's been several years ago. But <laughs> do you do you remember? Uh, was I that in the small space? I think I came to your gallery, and it was to see someone else's exhibit. Oh, okay. Because I was not a part of your stable of artists at that point. I think that's what I remember. Either that or it was something at CAM, California African American Museum. Oh, uh, okay. Right. Does that sound familiar? That sounds familiar. <laughs> that but that goes back, I think, like to the late yes. 80s or early 90s, something like that. Oh, yes. Does that make sense? CAM has been there since <coughs> 1984. So, right. uh, yes, indeed, it would be that long. Oh. So, Phoebe, uh, you are from Cleveland originally, but how did you end up in uh, Los Angeles, or the Los Angeles area, I should say? Well, uh, well, I started, no question about it, in Cleveland, born there, and went to school uh, at Ohio University, and also ended up teaching high school in Cleveland. So I went back after I graduated and had my degree in painting and in education. And I knew that I wanted to move out of Cleveland, wasn't sure exactly the direction I wanted to go, but my brother <coughs> lived here and said, if you're thinking about any place, come to, to Los Angeles. You at least have one person of family here. And I thought, okay, well, that sounds pretty good. So, And that was in 1969. So we're wow. doing the math on that one. It's, yeah, yeah, uh, quite a while. 50 ago. years, yes. And at the time that you moved, were you uh, active as an artist at that point? Or? I was. And uh, not only was I trying to get into galleries in Cleveland, which uh, in <clears throat> those days, in the early 60s, proved very difficult. So uh, there was a group of us, uh, African Americans, who actually started our own, you know, necessity as the mother of invention. Yeah. We found a storefront uh, that was empty, and it was $100, and there were 10 of us, so we had $10 a month. That was our uh, our rental fee for our space that we would have, and we actually started having shows there. Oh, wow. And this is in Cleveland? It was in Cleveland, oh, yes. Wow. And from there, you know, people started to hear about us. And uh, we would have shows like once a month, and Caramu Theater actually had a gallery, and so they invited us to be uh, part of their uh, gallery opening. And... Uh, you know, that's how some of us got our work out there. Oh, my goodness. But doing this and also teaching at the same time, you know, working uh, as a teacher during yeah. the day in high school, uh, art teacher, mm -hmm. and then coming home and painting. So I was so used to having multitasking and two careers that uh, once I moved out here and uh, and originally got into radio. So, <laughs> again, two careers, the yeah. art and radio. and eventually was our uh, sales uh, in radio. Oh, wow. Okay. So I was just curious, mm -hmm. are you ever in touch with any of the other artists that form that sort of collective of 10 artists in uh, Cleveland? Do you ever see Actually, or hear about them? I did see one at uh, the Broad Theater. Uh, actually, it was the Broad Museum okay. uh, downtown when they had the Soul of a Nation. Oh. And it was Nelson <clears throat> Stevens. And he was actually a teacher in Cleveland. He taught... Uh, junior high school oh, wow. and he was in that afro cobra part of the exhibit um that uh was at the uh, soul of a nation um, and by the way you actually led a tour as i recall I right i did i did that was so oh i was so honored to do that and to talk about people that i knew or had worked with or had shows with and uh, had quite a turnout so oh, that's awesome yes i was just curious though going backwards again um you started out as a painter, is that right? And then yes. kind of got into collage. And collage is basically your medium, if that's okay to say. It's okay to say, yeah. yes. And uh, how did <laughs> yes. that transition happen? I think it was students uh, when I was teaching high school. And we actually ran out of ink and paint. And so I had to improvise with my students and it was collage and newspapers and magazines and putting together found objects. And I liked so much what they were doing. Now, I had done some of this in um, 
at Ohio University as a painter. Yeah. But uh, to see what my students were doing so inspired me that I continue to do, to go home and do it at night. So that's how. Well, one thing that was really impressive yes. some time ago, I remember yeah. being in your studio and you had all these papers from literally just about <laughs> everywhere, right? I mean, you collect, you collect yes. these things yes. and, and keep them for use <laughs> later on, right? I collect them. You know, it seems like they've been there since I've been there. Yeah. And what happens is I'm so, oh, oh, goodness, I'm so excited when I see different papers, materials, that uh, I was at the University of Rhode Island one day and uh, doing artist in residence there. Uh -huh. And I mentioned the <coughs> professor. I really liked his scarf. And by the time I'd gotten back home, he'd actually sent me the scarf. Oh, my goodness. And so... <laughs> It, it's now, you know, something where I keep looking and going, no, I can't use it yet. I can't use it yet. But, uh, you know, the papers from all over the world, Sri Lanka or India, and you'd see these, the rice papers from Japan. And I was getting so excited by Minge papers that yeah. uh, I couldn't wait to work with them. And uh, so I would kind of work my schedule around. Let me think of, OK, I want to use this paper now what am I going to do with it you yeah. know it's going to go in there but I just don't know what the subject matter will be yet so um, I had to rework that and then people started having a door uh, at the front door of their homes they actually have a Phoebe box and <laughs> it's everything they don't want you know they've been throwing things in it for weeks because right. everybody is decessioning I'm the only house that's <laughs> us sessioning and so it's all ah, let's give it to Phoebe there's some wrapping paper here's my grandmother's old clock here's my and so you go to people's houses and they say oh I've got something for you Phoebe I've got... and I thought so it's like another Phoebe box but <laughs> I'm so excited to see what People are willing to discard. So well, that's so interesting, though. I mean, yes. if to look inside of the box, you're not knowing yes. what's going to be in there, yes. and yes. it could help inform uh, what you're going to end up doing on yes. on the canvas. It does, and sometimes they will give you a little history about why they collected, what they did, and uh, at the University of Alabama, uh, a couple years ago, I was down there doing an artist in residence in Tuscaloosa. Oh. And I mentioned about the one at the University of Rhode Island had given me this, sent me the scarf. Well, they had a luncheon for me at the University of Alabama the next day. And one of the professors walked in with this box. And I thought, no, no, no. <laughs> uh, she said, Professor Green said, you look more like my mother. My mother sends me her stuff, but you look more like her. If you can't use it on your collage, then wear it, do whatever you want. <laughs> That's so cool. And then Fent sent me more boxes once I got home. Oh, no kidding. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that is so nice, though. Yeah, I, it is. Very considerate. Yes. Excellent, excellent. So, Phoebe, you know, one of the things I remember, so you had this wonderful show at the University of Laverne yes. uh, uh, not you. too long ago. Yes. And uh, I just remember... There's a piece in particular called uh, um, Leaving Colored Only. Yes. And so one of the things that I remember about that piece, it was very personal because it was uh, like a tribute to your yes. stepmother. It was uh, a tribute, and <clears throat> it was also that she was um, never had that much good to say about herself. Mm. Now, here's a woman who spoke four languages, Latin, French, Spanish and English and was always at the top of her class but because she came from Texas you know in another time and place yeah she never felt worthy mm. and so I thought well I'll just do some paintings around her life and dedicate dedicate it to her yeah. the show to her and leaving colored only was about leaving Texas moving to the North, moving to Cleveland, winning the French medal in high school. Oh, wow. And yet all of that baggage that you have as a child, you never feel worthy. And unfortunately, she passed away before the show opened. It was yeah. at your gallery. I believe it was 2008. Oh, right. And uh, she would have been saying, oh, no, why me? I'm not worthy. And wow. I thought, oh, my goodness. But that was leaving colored only and moving to another time and place where 
you could do things with your life and you could explore and also you had more opportunities yeah and as people were leaving in the great migration she was part of that too. so that was really a, a multiple uh, uh, um, a multitude of things that yes. impressed me about that piece yes. because it was personal but also uh, the, like the name of the title implies yes. uh, these there were signs that were co confronting black Absolutely. people all the time listen yes. you, you go to the back and yes. colored only and that kind of thing yes <clears throat> so that's what they were leaving uh, basically yes. uh, Jim Crow uh, segregation yes and and to see that every day of your life to mm. know that you always had to uh, you were always second uh, class. You were always uh, sent to the back. Yeah. You were never felt worthy. Right. And uh, I also did an artwork called The Class of 33. Yeah. And it was her class at, um, at Wilberforce. Wilberforce was a college in Ohio. Historically black college, correct? It was the, f the first one, yes. And uh, now it's Wilberforce University. But when she went there and was in the class of 33, she actually gave me this whole photograph at one point, this long photograph that it's I thought. Wonderful panora yes. panoramic uh, photo yes. of the class. It was uh, just graduating class, right? Oh, my <coughs> goodness. And you just can't even imagine what they went through to be the class of 33 and then go out in the world. Well, that's what's so amazing yes. to me yes. is that in the face of all of that discrimination and yes. so forth, Yes. Your stepmom actually was able to master four languages. Oh, absolutely. Come away with a, a, a degree yes. a higher uh, in higher education. And, yes. I mean, it's just phenomenal. One of the first women to, <coughs> and, and persons of color to work at the IRS. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then from there, the post office. You know, we can't imagine the post office being segregated in our lifetime, but, yeah. but it wasn't that long ago. Right. That it was like any other... Uh, organization company so yeah unfortunately it was a fact of life I, yes. I know my father for instance um, he got a job uh, with uh, the NIH way yes. back in the 40s during uh, the World War II and they found out that he was actually black and next oh. thing you know they reorganized yes. the entire department to yes. eliminate the job he was already oh hired goodness. for and NIH was the National Institute of, of Health Health, and <coughs> your father was a scientist he was a as chemist. I recall yeah. oh my goodness so, I mean, it's, it, yes. it's, a, it's a fact of life. Yes, uh, and you saw the repercussions in him. Oh, my God. Next thing you know, he gets drafted in the military, and, yeah. and the military itself was segregated. Yes, yes. Yeah, he talked about coming back. I thought about this because you did a piece yes. uh, that uh, I think addressed when President Truman ended Absolutely. segregation. Absolutely. It was Executive Order 9981. Yeah, exactly. And it was the order to uh, that you could... Uh, you could begin to desegregate. It was written in, you know, very um, terms that uh, it wasn't didn't have to be right now, but right. it was the beginning of desegregating the armed services. Yeah, because my, my dad told me this horror story. So he comes back after World War II. He was in the Pacific Theater. Yes. And he and other black officers, he was an officer. He was at that time a first lieutenant. Yes. And so... The train they were they, now they're back in the states, and so now he's trying to get on a train, and the colored only car was um, full. Oh my goodness! But the white yes. car wasn't, and so yes. what they did, he told me, imagine these 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 guys are all in uniform. Yes. And so, uh, a person that worked for the uh, train company mm -hmm. uh, dragged a um, uh, string across part mm -hmm. of the oh car, oh, oh. Uh, draped yes. newspapers over it. Oh. And so behind the newspaper yes. border was where the uh, black officers had oh, to sit. Oh, goodness. And so anyway, that was just a, an extreme example of how far this segregation thing went. Yes, and it sounds extreme now, but in those days... It, it was, was a fact it of was, life. It was normal. Yeah. You know, it was the normalcy. It was yes, but back to your, yes. your stepmom, that was the kind of thing that yes. she was leaving. And every a lot yes. of blacks were leaving uh, to try to find a, a better way. Yes, the, the book that had such an impact too and on me doing an artwork was uh, uh, Isabel Wilkinson's uh, that uh, The Warmth of Other Suns mm -hmm. and it was about that migration from you know the early 1900s to about 1971 that six million African Americans left the South for better opportunities in the West and North yeah. and uh, you know, it, it, it really hit some clarity for me that 
that that was why my grandparents left. Yeah. And uh, uh, I did one artwork that uh, had to do with um, in the Garden of the Buick because so many African American men came to Cleveland were working in the plants, ah, the automotive, uh, uh, automotive, in, yeah. automotive industry, mm. and the car they most wanted to drive was the Buick 225, <laughs> what we called it, the deuce and a quarter. Deuce oh, a my quarter. goodness. <laughs> and when somebody bought that car, it didn't matter whether they had a house that was falling down, but you had the deuce and a quarter, <laughs> the 225. Uh, you had it on your front lawn. You wanted to make sure the whole neighborhood saw it, that you know, anybody who passed that street yeah. would know that you had arrived, yeah. both financially and Economic, well, economically, but also educationally. Oh yeah, you had it was a status symbol. It was, it was the status symbol for many men, yeah, and families, and uh, who worked in the plants and uh, have left the South, and now they've they have have achieved a middle class. Yeah, so it was, it was quite something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, there's a piece that's actually in the background here, uh, to my left and to your right, uh -huh. that you did uh, in collaboration with uh, oh, Maya yes. Angelo. Oh, and there's yes. a woman there holding a sign saying, don't buy uh, where you can't work. <laughs> yes. So that's, uh, oh, I think, is really a, a very uh, powerful statement yes. of hey, defiance of that system. Yes. Right? Yeah. I mean, is that... Oh, goodness. Can you it, talk about but not only that, but also uh, eventually that collaboration with Maya Angelou, and that's a poem next to to the figure by uh, Langston Hughes oh, called Mother to Son. Mother to Son, as still is climbing. Oh, well, to start with, when I got a call from Maya Angelou, and here's someone who is not only a collector of my work, but a dear friend and a mentor, and so... Uh, she left me a voicemail. It was one of those voicemails that was on tape, and yeah. it was, Fabe, dear, <laughs> I want you to think about this new adventure, this new problem, this new, that only you can solve. And uh, it is to uh, illustrate the work of the great Langston Hughes. And I thought, oh my am goodness. I really hearing this, you yeah. know? And I, you're hearing it. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually getting chills <laughs> listening to you describe this. <laughs> This is amazing. Yeah. And yeah. I hope that you will consider doing this. And you are, I have already let them know that there's nobody else who should be doing this but you. And I thought, Oh, my goodness. And I thought, you know, when, when your mentors can see things in you that others cannot, yeah. and you can't even see it in yourself, yes. and you think, she thinks I can... I can illustrate the yeah. work of Langston Hughes. Oh, my God. And her yeah. stature. I mean, yes. oh, my God. One yes. of the most respected. Yes. Uh, and so, you know, all of a sudden you start getting the chills yeah. and, 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 and the self-doubt. And, you know, oh my, I don't know whether I can do this. And let me think about a way not to. Let me think about a way to say no. <laughs> you know? and I thought, no, that's not going to happen with the woman who left that message. I was going to say she wasn't going to take <laughs> no, no for an answer, right? No. <laughs> and she'd already talked to the publishers, and so oh. they were calling and saying, "Congratulations, you know, we have selected your work uh, for you to illustrate this uh, a book along with." And then that's when they told me that Maya would also have a part in it she would be titling the work mm. titling the, uh, the compilation yes and also selecting the poems of Langston Hughes and writing the foreword on him and the afterword on me so she actually would have all of these parts a big role yeah yes which she didn't mention either oh, wow. she <laughs> <laughs> so she was just an incredibly thoughtful caring and uh well, you had a special um, relationship with yes, Maya, right? Yes, it did. Yes, yeah, that's, so, that's so interesting and exciting, yes. I think. Yes, and particularly when she lived out here, and I tried to convince her not to move to North Carolina, to Winston-Salem, you know, you just, Maya, things were, you know, she was working at 20th Century Fox and uh. doing its sisters there, <coughs> and, and uh, but she was trying to convince me that the best place for me would be Winston Salem to move, and I thought, "Oh no, 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 no!" <laughs> thought, Hold up, time out. <laughs> and she's telling me how cheap, you know, property was, and uh, <laughs> she was she was selling it. That's right, that's right, you know. And even when she finally moved there, you know, and I'd go see her, 
And she would take me around to see houses in Phoebe. You could be living in. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and she had just so embraced Winston Salem. Yeah. And, uh, and that's where she ultimately moved and lived yeah. to oh, the did. end of her life, right? Yes, she did. Yeah. And she was a Reynolds professor's chair at Wake Forest. Wow. And uh, yes, until the day she died. So wow. she was. Well, back to this collaboration, by yes. the way. So just so uh, everybody knows, there were like six images you created, if yes. I'm not mistaken, and there were eight poems. That's true. Is that uh, correct? Yes. And uh, for some reason, the editor and the publisher said, no, six is enough. Six is enough. They didn't want to have too many. Not, I, not an image for each poem. Exactly. Mm. And I thought, okay, it seems like something's missing for me. But I got to work on a book where I selected the cover and of oh, wow. the... the um, lettering and oh, wow. uh, it, it was a handmade book yeah. so and a big when you say book i mean it is it was dimensionally it was pretty big I mean, it's big it, and it's heavy yeah, yes yeah. <laughs> yes very nicely done though yes and a limited Tittery. edition but yes. did you create works specifically for it or did you just look into your um already created works and select from there uh both you know if i thought that i had a work that would work with the poem but for the most part you know i was creating works oh okay yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, and how much back and forth between you and uh, Maya d took place? I mean, uh, was there at that point? Was it just up to you to figure out? It was, uh, you know, she it was just up to me. Yeah. She just wanted to know when the book would be finished and who she would be sending it to. Yeah. You know yeah. that that, but she trusted my vision. That's awesome. And uh, and now that I'm thinking about it, all of them were were made for that book. Yeah. Well, to all me, it's like a, I'm a, thinking of. Yeah, yeah that I may have taken parts of another artwork yeah. to include that, but all of them had to be, you know, their original. Well, I love that so, piece. I, I, oh, thank I you. It's a perfect, perfect thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And when you talk to individuals who actually went through those times, yeah. you know, I guess I am just so grateful and thankful that my parents and grandparents went through such a horrendous time. Oh, yeah. That when I think about getting up every morning, and I thought th this is the easy part, you know, this yeah. is uh, th this is not th this this is not a problem. You know, the problems they went through were really problems. Oh yeah. I mean, figuring out how to get on, you know, the people say, how can you drive in L.A. or how long did it take? <laughs> right. It's okay. Yeah, right. You know? <laughs> Relatively speaking. I got I mean, a car. That's a, that's a fun. <laughs> that's right. Right. I got gas for the car. Right. You know, you, you're you so thankful that, that uh, you know, that you don't have a side road to take because of your color or you well, can't go certain places. Well, yes, exactly. I remember at one of your shows, let's see, that was, what was the name of that um, show you participated in? Uh, I'm sorry, I couldn't remember the name of the mm -hmm. show, but it was... Near the uh, L.A. County Fairgrounds. Do you want to remember? Oh, goodness. About? Route 66. Route 66. Oh, yeah. And I remember being in that show, and they were yes. selling copies of the Green Book. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Which uh, basically meant, I mean, yes. it was a book, a reference book to telling uh, African Americans where, where they, they could, could stay, stay to avoid all the segregated yes. hotels and accommodations and so forth. Yes. And uh, I just thought it was interesting because it's Route 66, and that's yes. going cross country. But Absolutely. So the trip for, if you're planning as an African American to take that yes. trip in your car, you had a whole different calculation to make, right? You sure did. Yeah. That uh, no one who was a, a Caucasian had to... Had to deal with that. ...know any of those places. Yeah. And so it wasn't until the movie that most people understood that there was a green book. Yeah. And it was special for every major city. And... So many people added to it yeah. and opened businesses and managed to stay in business because they knew they had a clientele that was, uh, that was going to be coming <laughs> to them. And uh, yes. And were, were you happy with the show, by the way, the Route 66? Oh, goodness. I enjoyed it. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Because you ended it. up making it was a pretty sizable Ooh. piece for that, right? Yes. Uh, one was uh, six feet and uh, uh, worked with students on that. And so the space was 20 feet by 30 feet. I mean, it was just a huge space that they had dedicated to each artist yeah. uh, to come up with how we saw Route 66. And uh, knowing that it ended at the Santa Monica Pier also, that you could see the sign, the end of the road, yes. Route 66, yes. uh, 
But to see so many images of how others saw Route 66 was quite exciting. It was very cool, yes. the whole show. I, I really yes. enjoyed uh, uh, enjoyed seeing the whole show, but especially your oh, particular thank addition you. to it. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Oh, another artwork that reminded me of what my uh, ancestors went through was my stepmother's brother. He was in World War II. Uh-huh. And so because I'm the longest liver in my family, I have the repository from everybody who's <laughs> passed away. So basically like an archive. I have everything. Oh, wow. And I had his medals from World War II. Oh, wow. And some he had won uh, because he was in the French theater. He was in Germany and, and France. Uh-huh. And uh, and so uh, he came, once he came back to Cleveland after the war and couldn't find a job. And my mother, my stepmother always said, Mill always said he was the smartest one of the three kids. But... Um, he ended up uh, on the streets oh, and no. being a wino oh. and um, died in a knife fight. And so oh my God. it was just um, mm, an artwork that I wanted to do that kind of was dedicated to her brother. Mm. We called him brother, but his real name was Luther Gaines. Uh-huh. And uh, when I did get the call from the University of Alabama, or it was an, I think it was an email, then a call, to come to um, Tuscaloosa, mm-hmm. Tuscaloosa um, to the University of Alabama, I thought, I never heard anything good from my family about Alabama other than, whew, glad we're not there. Whew, yeah. Good grief. Glad yeah. we don't have to go back there. Right. And I thought to myself, do I really want to go to Alabama? Right. And um, I thought, well, maybe I would be the first one to to change something and to make Luther Gaines kind of feel at home that he uh, that all of his efforts in the war and getting us to this point uh, we were a nation that we didn't have as many dividing lines and going back south to places that were not welcoming well, I keep when, thinking of the University of Alabama. You think of George Wallace standing yes. there oh, yes. trying to forbid uh, right. the entrance of, oh, a, of oh, a black yeah. person going oh, there. Oh, yes, yes. And, you know, saw that entrance. When I did go there, I said, yes, I'll come. And uh, Wow, that's it very was, powerful. It was one of the most welcoming trips I've ever taken oh, wow. to, uh, to show my work. And so I'm... So that was, was it a part of an exhibit? Did yes, it was an exhibit and also artist in residence. So, oh, wow. Uh, I had a great time at the oh. University of Alabama. Oh, that's great. And yeah. what a tribute and a tragedy, though. I, yes. It, it breaks my heart to hear about uh, yes. essentially your uncle, I guess. Is yes, it was. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and so when I think about getting up and how difficult and uh, people talking about how bad things are, and there are areas that are pretty bad, oh, yeah. as we well know. Cause, sure. You know, you, it's not just how far we've come, but how far we've got to go. Oh, yeah. But those of us who have lived through all these iterations of, of movements and seen how much we've closed certain gaps or opened certain areas for all of us. Yeah. We just know we just keep getting up. If there's any secret to this, you just keep getting up and you keep doing the work, yeah. and uh, and be grateful and thankful that so many people lived and died on your behalf. Yes, um, to so, get you to this place. Something that I think too yes. often gets taken for granted. Yes, yes. So if you if you look at my work, for the most part, it's celebratory, yeah. because of the people who came before me. Mm-hmm. So I understand why I'm here. I yeah. think I. I've got a grasp on if I can tell the story through my work um, of what it was like for so many people and what that work and what that mm, looks like now. Yeah. So there is some comparison. Uh, at least it's part of the memory, you know. We, yeah. Um, our muscle memory, our institutional memory, I mean, it goes in, in a flash now. So Well, everything's all speeded up, right? 
them. You, people look at their phones and yes. they're getting, yes. not just they're not using it as a phone so much as a yes. uh, a medium to the outside world. Yes, and we spend more time looking at what other people are doing yeah. and wishing we were part of their life than spending time on our own life. Yeah. And one of the things I always <laughs> lecture about is we need to turn off everything and listen to ourselves. I think that's and a powerful thing. We don't spend enough time listening to what we want and what we should be doing. And I know at one point I was talking about turning off television. Well, <laughs> and I remember going backstage after I finished the lecture on spending more time with what your creativity is, what your purpose is. And there were two people backstage that said, I don't watch television that much. I, you just think I do. And she, yes, you do. And so they were arguing. I thought, let me go out the other door. I think, totally in the middle of that that's one. Right. That's right. So it's amazing what we think we're doing with our time. Yeah, right. And all of a sudden you look at what the day looks like and you think, what have I done Yeah. to move a needle? What have I done to... To help somebody? What have I done to create something? Yeah. I know I want to do this, but how many days am I just going to sit here and think about it? So yeah. it's part of that. Well, that's one of the things I think is so compelling about your work, though, that acknowledgement of what happened in the past to Thank help you. bring us to the present. Yes. And yes. also to keep in mind to prevent some of these things from happening in the future. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I was doing a lecture at uh, and an art exhibit at downtown at um, the Federal Reserve Bank. Oh, really? You know, on Grand Avenue. Most people know, uh, don't know that, I, I didn't know that. that more money is downtown than any place else because that's the distribution for the Western states. Oh, wow. And so even though it's called the Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco. It's located Los in Los Angeles LA. branch. It's oh, what Los it Angeles. is. Okay. Yes, and you know when you see Cash, the dog who sniffs your car before you can even go in, <laughs> and when they invited me to do a lecture and also a luncheon and a, an artist in residence kind of situation where I would talk to people in the Cash division, and they had me hooked up with all seven uh, divisions uh, on the western side, um, whether it's Hawaii or Oregon or. That's too cool. Oh, it was. It was. I would never expect anybody <laughs> well, to say that. That's just amazing. <laughs> well, how how was that? I mean, did it you? Was, I had I had an absolute joy doing it. Oh, it was fantastic! Just, uh, but one of the artworks I took was uh, uh, wheels down at LAX and and see the work, the uh, elegance and style of Paul R. Williams, architect, who was the first African American architect in. Uh, uh, in America, in that association, and uh, he also did the uh, L.A. theme at LAX and yeah. the Beverly Hills Hotel and so many of the Bank of Americas. And, and uh, But um, to talk about the fact that he also started a bank. He started Broadway Federal Bank. Paul he Williams and did. Paul Williams and his other in-law, Claude wow. Hudson, wow. Store, two of the men who started it because people couldn't get loans from traditional banks. Wow. And so Broadway Because Federal of their race, bank, right? Absolutely. Yeah. You couldn't get... Uh, and so... And I said, write this down or type this down, but you got to remember the name Paul R. Williams. Look it up. Yeah. Because the reason there are Broadway federal banks here... Is because of him. Because of him. And he wasn't just an architect. He realized that the money, how it flowed, that he wasn't at that table. Yeah. And you couldn't get a loan, and nobody else could. And as an architect, he saw how that money worked. Yeah. And... And so talking about that and people t writing things down or typing. And one woman had told me afterwards, she said she actually worked at Broadway Federal Bank at one point. Oh, my she goodness. came and, up to and, me. And she, yes. she was at that time working at the Reserve? Yes. Oh, yes. Wow. And she now is working at the Federal Reserve. And you just never know 
what your conversations that and is so, monologues are going to. That is so cool. Yes, yes. You know, I think I saw where uh, they're doing on PBS a, uh, a, a program about Paul yes, Williams. Yes, they are. And it's coming up soon. That's fantastic. And yes. then he also designed uh, Golden State Mutual Insurance Company. You're so right. Yeah. Yes. And the courthouse downtown. And uh, Well, you know, it's so funny. I have a, um, a client of mine bought a home. That was designed. This is a personal residence that yes. was designed b uh, by Paul Williams, and the irony of it was, it was located at a time it was, at this particular time that he mm -hmm. that was built. It was located in an area where Paul Williams himself couldn't live. Yes, because it was segregated, yes. and so he actually looked up the um, the codicil or whatever they call it. Yes, that actually detailed that mm -hmm. you couldn't sell if you were the owner you couldn't sell to a black person or yes. a mexican and there was a mm -hmm. list of people you could not sell yes and the irony was just so amazing wasn't it i mean a person yes. designs yes. of his talent he designs the house yes. in an area he couldn't even live in uh and one of the things that we learned from karen's books karen hudson his granddaughter who is the keeper of his legacy and writes these incredible books on oh. her grandfather yeah uh, was that uh, Paul Williams learned to write upside down so he wouldn't have to go on the same side of the person he was talking to. Oh, my goodness. They were white and shake their hand. That he learned to write upside down so the desk was between them. And so wow. you, you, you can't even imagine somebody going through all of this. That's incredible. He, and it sounds absurd, yes, too. That, yes. That would be uh, offensive to... Yes. Just stand next to somebody. I mean, good Lord. Well, she was the one who said yes to me using some of uh, the renderings from her books uh, on his uh, his drawings and yeah. uh, his architectural renderings and, uh, and photographs. Was, was that included in that piece you just mentioned? Yes, ago? yes. Oh, that's fantastic. And, uh, so I'm grateful to my friendship with Karen and learning so much about her grandfather. Oh, so, that's awesome. So yeah. we're just quite fortunate of the people we have in Los Angeles that that sometimes we don't revere. And Paul Williams actually designed the houses of people like Frank Sinatra and Lucille Ball. Oh, wow. And what was happening, too, is that we would watch these programs on early television like Edward R. Murrow, mm -hmm. and they would take you into these celebrity homes. We had no idea that they were, they were the architecture was an African-American. Right. But it was the homes we wanted to live in. And so we got a sense of what that grandeur looked like. And so it's every time I'm go in a Paul Williams home, I feel like I'm home. Oh, that's <laughs> too cool. Like that's awesome. I'm in a home of friends and a <laughs> friendship home. <laughs> that's awesome. Oh, yeah, goodness. That's fantastic. Thank you. So, so Phoebe, um, I'm just trying to think back now. You had some kind of a relationship with Oprah Winfrey, right? I mean, wasn't, yes. isn't uh, yes. like, uh, I'm forgetting the name of the, movie or program it was, if you could tell us. Uh, Women of Brewster Place. Women of Brewster yes. Place. I couldn't think of it, yeah. Uh, that came through Maya Angelou. Again, oh so goodness. many of those connections came through Maya. Uh, at one point, uh, I think I first got a phone call from Stedman Graham, and uh, you know he was the, uh, the friend of Oprah Winfrey, mm -hmm. and he wanted to, he was thinking about a a Christmas present for Oprah oh. and he had talked to Maya and she suggested to him that uh, he Contact talked to you? me yes and I thought okay well uh, we said do you have anything that you know and he told me some things that she really cared about like women's issues and uh, African-American issues and I thought well uh, perhaps we could do something just for her also mm -hmm. And he said something about meet me at, uh, we were staying at a hotel. She had some uh, event that they were going to. And this was a few days later, they were going to be in L.A. And I thought, okay. And I thought, okay, goodness, I have to take time for my radio because, you know, the, and the, it was on a Sunday. But uh, that's when you got ready for the next day mm -hmm. a lot of times and uh, being in radio. And I thought, okay, that's going to have to wait I am meeting with uh, Stedman Graham today. And at some point, uh, she got wind of it and said, um, I hear you coming over here. And, uh, <laughs> okay, I guess I'm having more of a meeting than I thought. <laughs> so so um, I had actually started working on the piece. 
because he sent me some things, but really it wasn't enough. Uh, uh, you know, photographs and things that he thought might be important. Uh -huh. And I thought, okay, well, let me just sit here for a moment and center myself and maybe I can conjure up some things. Yeah. And because I didn't watch television very much, you know, I really didn't have a sense with other than she was on the air and yeah. she was fairly new. And, uh, and I'd already started the piece when I went to see them. I'd, and she said, um, okay, well, let's talk about the piece. And I thought, okay, well, would you like to know what I've already done? <laughs> so, and I started telling her and I was, I was sitting in at the, at where they had, they were getting her ready for this event and doing her hair and her nails and, and makeup. And so the only place to sit was on the rail of the bathtub. Oh. Looking at her through a mirror. <laughs> and um, That's an interesting visual. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and I said, well, you know, it has you in it, in the artwork, and, and you're six years old or about that age. Oh. And uh, there's a woman uh, who's elderly who's sitting at the edge of the bed, and uh, she has glasses. And I think Oprah had said, no, she didn't have glasses. You're talking about my grandmother. She didn't have glasses. And oh. I thought, oh, okay. And I kept thinking, darn it. I made them out of metal <laughs> <laughs> and little wire glasses. <laughs> and it had glass. And I wanted to say, no, no, no. And she just shot that That's down. right. That's right. You know, that median gel, you just can't take things off real quick. <laughs> Come on, I'd, slow down. I'd have to cut into the canvas. I think, okay, don't tell her my problems. <laughs> don't mention it. And at one point, uh, and I was saying, you know, that's a chenille bedspread, and it's, it has little yellow balls all over it. That's what I saw. Yeah. And she said, wait a minute, hold on. And I thought, uh -oh. this is not good. She's, she's <laughs> giving you lots of notes. <laughs> <laughs> and then she said, I just realized my grandmother did have glasses. And I oh. thought, oh, <laughs> thank the goodness. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> and and she said yes, but she only re she only used them. She only put them on when she was reading the Bible. And I thought, ah, Oprah, the glasses are on top of a Bible that I have in her lap. Oh my God, that's giving she me chill said, bumps. What a coincidence! So she said, Oh, okay, you're remembering my childhood better. Than <laughs> <I am." laughs> yeah, that's kind of what artists do. That's, <laughs> that's what we do when we sit up and we just start thinking about. Yeah. And so then I said, there's, you know, there's, there's a figure on the other side of the bed and, uh, you know, an older gentleman. She said, there was no, there was no, there, there was nobody there. Mm -hmm. there. There was no older gentleman. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, okay, I thought, darn, who did I see? Who did I think I saw? And then at one point she stopped and she had tears and she said, oh. um, you have an intuitiveness. Uh, it, was, it was my, I think it was her grandfather. And oh, she wow. said, I never talked about him. I never, uh, I never mentioned him hmm. uh, because he only yelled at me. Oh. Um, and I said, do you want to leave him in? And, and so she said, it was a shadowy figure. I thought, well, that's what he is. You yeah. know, you, it's just a shadow of a figure. Yeah. And I think I can tell this because, um, you know, she had, after the artwork was uh, sent to her and I hadn't heard from her and, and uh, I thought, oh, do I call her? Do I wait for her to call me? Do I want to make sure she got it? Is yeah. it okay? It sounds kind of suspenseful. You might have been in. Yeah. yeah. At one point she said, well, you know, uh, uh, I... I, I said, there's some, there's a doll. She said, well, I had a corn cob doll. And I thought, a what? <laughs> I mean, I thought, I couldn't even imagine. Yeah. And when she said that, uh, she said, we were so poor hmm. that my doll was made of corn cob wow. and then it had a skirt on it. Oh, wow. And so I remember leaving the meeting because she said, okay, you don't need it for Christmas. You know, don't worry about that have it for my birthday, you know, I think it's coming up soon, like January 29th or uh, sometime this week. Okay. And uh, so just make sure you have it for them. I thought, oh, 
kid with a great kind of a little more time. <laughs> and I went straight to a Ralph's and got a piece of corn and took it home. Started cutting it down the shaft and trying to imagine being that poor. Yeah. That you had a doll that was made, made from a corn cob. Corn cob. And when she did get the artwork, um, and she was kind of crying and talking about it, and she said, uh, I will never live in a house where this painting doesn't hang. Oh, wow. And so just knowing that, I thought, okay, I guess it's okay to talk about it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but it was, it, it was, um, mm. And then she would call me with um, other projects, uh, women of Brewster Place. Mm -hmm. uh, can you come over at night after work and uh, stay on the set and do some sketches and then come up with some artworks for that that I want to give to the staff and to the um, people who are working on this, yeah. uh, the crew, the, uh, the actors. Actresses. So the woman of Brewster Place, was that like a series? I forgot. Uh, I actually, I did two artworks from it. Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, did a whole, uh, you know, line drawings because I was on the set and I was drawing from there. Okay. And I had some photographs um, that were sent to me. But, uh, yeah, I did two artworks uh, from that series. Oh, okay. And, uh, and then the whole series of uh, line drawings. But that must have been, I'm imagining that must have been very rewarding for you as an artist to be able to create a piece. It was. And evoke that kind of emotion. Yes. I mean, yes. From, from Oprah, but even if it was anyone else, I mean, yes. just to have that kind of sensitivity. Yes. To to touch someone that way. I, I, you know, it's interesting because the worst thing that that somebody can say to me is, "I want to commission you," and you think, "No, no, no, right. buy something I already have." Yeah, right. right. <laughs> because I have to work off of your brain. Yes. Of the brain of somebody else, and then I've got to. Make sure you like it before you buy it. Yes. And and uh, I have a friend, Bernard Kenzie, and he wanted me to do one of Shirley Kenzie, his wife, mm -hmm. for her 60th as a surprise. And I thought, no, 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 that's too many people. You got to please. I got to please you because you're the buyer. Right. I got to please Shirley, who may look at it and say, that's not me. Who is that? <laughs> that looked like Gumby to me. <laughs> what? Babe, I thought we were friends. I mean, <laughs> any of these things can happen to oh, you. Oh, especially, you know, it's oh, funny. I've talked to several. Bernard. Oh, my God, yes. <laughs> but just any, oh. I've talked to several artists who say one of the, one of the worst things, yes. to, one of the worst assignments is to do oh. a portrait because people have oh, a vision yes. of themselves. Yes. Even if you accurately portray them sometimes, yes. Yes. it's not how they see themselves. And it's, so yes. unless you nail how they see themselves, yes. and you can't know that without actually getting inside yes. their head some you're, kind of way. You're, you're reading their brain <laughs> exactly. and trying to go off of what you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at one point, uh, I got a call from uh, Ruben Cannon, who's a producer, mm -hmm. film producer. And Ruben had bought my work and bought something I already had. But he wanted me. To, he wanted to introduce me to Tyler Perry. At that time, I had no idea who Tyler Perry was. Yeah. He, was uh, he had movies, and also he was doing stage plays. And he said, "Okay, Phoebe." Ruben said, "I'm in New York. Uh, Tyler's in Atlanta. I'm going to put you on a three-way. Here I am in Los Angeles." And it was, "Hello, Tyler." And he's got this idea that he's going to this thing that Oprah is giving this event, this uh, gala mm -hmm. of uh, people who are important to her, women who are the most important to her, like uh, 10, 20 of them. And he wanted me to do an artwork from that. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, now here's Tyler. I had no idea who he was. <laughs> And so we agreed on a price, you know, you thought, fine, let's, let's try to do this. Yeah. And, uh, and he's saying what he thinks is important to him and about Oprah, uh, you know, in his life and also these women that he had met. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I got off the phone and thought, oh, great. Now I can start inhaling. It's now time to <laughs> inhale and maybe one day I'll get a chance to exhale. <laughs> and either, you know, I take this work over to him. Yeah. And when I took it to... Mm, was living or had a house in 
Big Rock in Malibu. And I took it to the home and someone met me at the door and I thought, and I was going to say, hello, Tyler. It wasn't, he said, I will take you to Mr. Perry. Oh. <laughs> and uh, uh, so, uh, you know, I was meeting Tyler for the first time mm -hmm. and he said, okay, let's unwrap it. I was not in a hurry to unwrap it. <laughs> I thought maybe I should <laughs> cage all him. Maybe we should talk about this a little first. Yeah. Yeah, kind of prepare him exactly, for what he's about to see. Yeah. Exactly, But he says, okay, let's do it. And he said, oh, my goodness. It's so much more than I thought it would be. It's oh, my so, God. It's, I can't that believe That must have it. been a relief. <laughs> <laughs> and his back was to, to me when I think, he said, are you okay? And I thought, I said, now I can feel, I can feel as though I can breathe yeah. a little. And he said, Phoebe. I left it to you and God. And I thought, oh, jeez. Oh, wow. okay. <laughs> and I thought, okay. I should have known I had angels and I had, you know, the Lord right there when I was doing all of this. Yeah. But, you know, when you're thinking of this and, and trying to, to work uh, in the middle of the night and working off somebody else's brain. And then he said, okay, do you have... And I said, oh, by the way, I brought you a catalog from the M. Hanks Gallery. And he said, oh, you have time to go through it? And I thought, a quick check of my agenda reveals I got <laughs> plenty of time. <laughs> I'm just busy. There's nothing else to do here. And so I started turning pages, and he was saying, how much is that? How much is that one? Is that, is that for sale? And I thought... Tyler, I didn't bring a, a you know a, a checklist with me. I didn't bring a list of, of a cost right. sheet with me. Right. It's not like some. It's not like a Sears catalog. That's the M. Hanks <laughs> Gallery sells. I thought I've got one at home. I'm sure, but <laughs> it's the gallery that you know sells the work for me. Yes. And he said, "Well, well, get back to me. Here's my secretary's name. You just get back to me on these that I'm interested in." And I thought. I think the first thing I did, and I was still in the car when I called you and yes. said, uh, I have someone's interested in several works. I remember <laughs> getting that call, and I was I'm getting chill bones remembering it. Yeah, that was really exciting. <laughs> exciting. Good Lord. That was fun. Yeah. And it was like, okay, now we, yes, they're all available. <laughs> and yes, we, fine, Phoebe, just tell me where you want me to send in the check. And I thought, oh. Oh my goodness! This is you know yeah, the M. Hanks Gallery. We yeah. just had fun with that. That was really that was a great show too. Yes. By the way, I really enjoyed yes. that whole thing and the catalog, yeah. which actually we have sitting uh, ne yes. next to us too. Yes, that was such a wonderful project. Though. Uh, thank you. It was it was a joy to do it, and and uh, you know we spent so much time working on something that that detail that uh, I'm surprised we're still friends. I'm surprised we didn't. <laughs> I thought he has the patience of Job. He really <laughs> no, that was really oh, great. Oh, goodness. And I think the final outcome was very, very, I thought, yes. very good. The, yes. the catalog and the show itself. And it's done just wonders for us. Uh, I know when uh, I called you and said, okay, Latanya is bringing Samuel L. Jackson with her. Oh, my God. I remember that <laughs> he day, just too. got off a plane. I remember that day, man. He comes in, and both of them, and here we are in the gallery, sitting in the gallery. Yeah, and we're wondering if they'll show up at 6 o'clock. And they actually showed up. At the exact hour. I remember. <laughs> that was such an exciting thing. And they spent about three hours there. And that was wonderful. <laughs> Asking questions and yes. and just yes. uh, admiring the work and ultimately yes. investing in a lot of it. That it was, was fantastic. Just, yes. I remember that like it was yesterday. <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> they were so wonderful to work with, yes. too. Oh, yeah. And he had said to her at one point, well, I thought you wanted another one. You you want that one, too? You want it? Oh, no. I remember they started yes. adding up. Yes. I, I kept yeah. thinking to myself, wow, this is ka-ching, ka -ching. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like hitting the lottery almost. We were just they were wonderful. Yes. They were really wonderful. Yes. Yeah. And I have so many memories of how people buy work, whether yes. it's friends of mine who will come into the gallery and say, well, my husband does all the buying. Oh, you know, yeah. I'm here, but, you know, he's the one who gets to select the work. I select, you know, the furniture he does. Or... If one of us doesn't like it, the other one doesn't get Can't to get it. Can't get it. Yeah, exactly. That's right. Kiss of death every time. <laughs> or, or when one will say, well, I, what about my jag? And I thought, 
That's depreciating. <laughs> the That's moment you drive it off the showroom floor. <laughs> in value. <laughs> That's right. I'm appreciating. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and like what? It gets better with time. I, right. I, I would sometimes use that one. <laughs> yes, yes. <You're, laughs> you can pass it down. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, it's the legacy. That's right, that's right. <laughs> so we have had so many kinds of different kinds of people. Oh my God, yes. And you get to know the thought process yes. of how people buy, what, yeah. what they do with discretionary income, what, yeah. what excites them. And when you... You're around people who really are excited by work, by the art, or as me as an artist. Uh, it's just quite special. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's so rewarding. Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah. And, uh, well, we know how many people that, you know, that this is just, uh, it's, it, it's a lifelong journey, you know? It's yeah. just, you really got to be in it, and you know that there's going to be an awful lot of no's. And somebody said to me recently, no, I can't do that. I thought, it's okay. <laughs> no sits on my shoulder. <laughs> it's ever present with me. And me too. It's one of... <laughs> <laughs> me too. Because I know one day there's going to be a yes. Yes. Maybe for, not from you, but there will be a yes in my life. <laughs> so it's okay. You know? <laughs> I got this far. <laughs> because, you know, as artists, uh, we're just you know, out here showing our wares and kind of opening up all of our thoughts, you know, whether it's literary or you're doing music or you're doing theater. And it's like walking into your mind, some people are going to like it. Some people are going to say, how much is this this ticket going to be for this theater, you know, concert? Yes. Or yes. Uh, it's going to be the economics of it. Right. And I'm and it's a, it's a big risk, it right? Is. I mean, because you're, you're putting yourself out there. Yes, yes. And, and uh, we're, I just happen to think we're the most hopeful mammals on this planet, yeah. <laughs> <Our> artists. <laughs> yeah. Because you're expecting somebody to show you who they are yeah. by, by their answers. Yes, and, and it's not only about the money. Obviously, money right. is important, yes. but it's, yes. it's kind of an affirmation. Yes, right? absolutely, yes. In fact, it's someplace down the list because you know that people who really can't afford a work will figure out how to do it. You know, it's oh, kind of like if you can figure out how to get that Jaguar and you can't afford it, yeah. you can figure out. Yeah, I, I spend my yes. time oftentimes helping them figure that yeah. out. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's part of my the job. good part. <laughs> <laughs> and you are indeed one of the best. Oh, you thank are, you. If you are not the best. <laughs> thank you. I mean, thank you. to see you in negotiation, which you are. Thank you, Phoebe. We, we have these, these affable personalities Thank you. but you know <laughs> we have the core of you know that we just um, stick to it if ness tenacity yes and, and a, another thing that i like to rely on is just not really i, I don't believe in the hard sell i don't think you can right. force anybody to do yes. anything or try to club them over the head with yes. anything i think it's just a matter of yes. helping them figure out what it is they actually want absolutely and yes. how to how to make it happen i think that's the best approach, I think. Yes, and when you're talking approach. about something that you should be emotionally invested in, yes, you know that that it's not something where, you know that it at, that, um, you know that's that's written or it's all figures and it's it's you know very uh, mm, uh, numbers oriented. Uh, that it has some emotional tie yes. when you're looking at a piece of work. Yes, it's and a connection. Uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, spiritual. Exactly. I exactly. think that's the beauty of be. seeing the piece yes. in person as opposed to just a photograph. Photograph yes. is great. Yes. But I think until you're actually in the presence of the piece, yes. you can't really there's feel it. There's a tactfulness. It. Yeah. Yes. And there's a, yeah. So when you're wrapping your arms around it, that's yes. uh, one of the things. Oh, exactly. Goodness. Well, I wanted to make sure to not forget to mm -hmm. bring up the fact that two of the pieces you've completed in the past or, or maybe were commissioned to do. Mm hmm had the presidential seal. I just yes. wanted to get that out there. Oh, can you, goodness. Can you yes. describe that? Oh, goodness. Uh, it started with, you know, one of those wonderful people in my life. She's since passed away, Zora Brown. She lived in Washington, and she was, she was a little upset that my work was not in any Washington gallery. 
And so she said, I'll take it upon myself to find you a gallery. And I thought, how sweet of you. Well, you know, Laura, let me tell you, that's, that's a full-time job, mm -hmm. and it may not pan out. And she said, not to worry, Phoebe. Oh, and she went in, I think it was like 39 galleries that she went to. Some would say, oh, oh no, uh, you know, we don't want any because they could see that she was a person of color. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for work, you know, that if you think we're going to take your work. She said, no, I have a friend. She said, no, we don't, we don't represent any African-Americans. She heard that. Mm. Or we already have one. We don't need any more. Got the token and that's it. Exactly. Or she heard so many... She was surprised at the derogatory comments mm. that she would hear that's just by walking into a gallery. That's terrible. And uh, eventually she was getting the, well, we'll get back to you, or thank you very much. There's no need for us to get back to you. Right. And that was about as kind as they could be. Oh, boy. <clears throat> and one gallery that she walked into, she called me that evening and said, you're not going to believe it. Not only do they want to take your work, but they want to know whether you would be interested in doing a commission work on um, President Bush. And, and this is the first President Bush. It's the first. H.W. Uh, Her H.W. Herbert Walker Bush, yes, in 19, I want to say 89. Okay. Oh, uh, uh, and then Clinton was 93. Hope I'm doing that right with yeah, my math. But, sounds right. Okay, uh, but um, they were looking for an artist, and so she had my artworks there, and she you know, brought them with her, uh, or photographs of them, and they liked what they saw, and they liked the idea that I'd done things in collage, and they thought, oh, this would be interesting for to do this and have a and a posters done as the official artwork. And, uh, uh, of the president of the United States. Yes, yes, That's of awesome. the inaugural, um, and have the inaugural seal on the artwork. That's cool. So That's very the cool. The person in the gallery, the owned the gallery, was actually working with the inaugural committee. Oh. Because he was already elected, mm -hmm. it was let's hurry up and get and you get know this done. <laughs> let's get this done. Yeah. <laughs> Whoever this woman is that you've got back in L.A., she's got to be fast too. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> and. I, you know, it was kind of hard to believe because yeah. I had heard the stories, you know, the weeks that she would call and say, well, not yet, but here's some of the bad comments I'd heard. So, so when she said, you know, I have this commission for you, Phoebe, and I thought, okay, let's, let's roll on it because, you know, that's time's a waste and yes, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. And um, it was, it was Quite exciting to do that and put the, see the presidential seal, the inaugural seal what, on the artwork. What an honor. Yes. Yes, well, it was. And I, I, I know this comes yes. much after the fact, but this deserves a yet another congratulations. That's fantastic. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. So I just wanted to make sure before we before we close, though, uh -huh. that, that we know what you're working on now and what you have oh, coming up goodness. in the future. Well, thank you. Thank you. Well, you know, living in the San Fernando Valley, and that's a part of Los Angeles that's very dry, doesn't get much water. And, you know, you almost have to decide whether you're going to fill your pool or flush your toilet. I mean, that's <laughs> just, it's come to that. Yeah. Uh, and so water has become, and, and how do we need water in our lives? How important is it? Can we live without it? And yeah. so doing things that... that Oh, can we get it from other, you know, <laughs> from the atmosphere and from other galaxies, you know, mm -hmm. somehow that we're, how we're being clever about how we're using it. Yeah. And so I've been thinking more about and working on pieces that have to do with, uh, with water, oh, as, wow. uh, surprisingly. And uh, I think that's great because well, that's something I think is easy to take for granted. Yes. Right? You just oh, turn yes. the shower on and just stay in there for, for, for think. way yes. too long. And then <laughs> and it comes and you, you right. don't think more that's about right. it. Until but I think that's awesome. Until you're, you know, like the old saying, you, you don't miss your water until the well that's runs right. dry. That's right. Until you find out LA is going to have water police. Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> seeing when which, you walk. Which we've been through recently yes. with the droughts, yes. right? I mean, yes. absolutely. Water rationing, essentially. You can't water your lawn after yes. a certain Yes, yeah, so yeah. Oh, adding awesome. that to, you know, desert existence, oh, how long can we, can can we do this? Yeah. Yes, so that's been on some of the artworks I've been working on. Well, that's fantastic. And any shows coming up? Or? 
I'm working on uh, going to Little Rock, Arkansas. So oh. we'll see if the Hearn Gallery, they have talked to me. Uh, but I don't have dates yet. Oh, excellent, so, excellent. Yes. So and the Hearn Gallery located in um, Little, Little Rock, Rock Arkansas, Arkansas. And I enjoy that gallery, and they've done a great job. And Great space. Uh, Garbo Hearn. And, uh, yeah, they, oh, goodness. And want to support, to make sure those galleries continue. The galleries exactly. that are sowing so much of people of color. Yes. You know, it's just... Oh, goodness, we need to support them. So I think it's an important message to get out there because yeah. it's part of yes. the ecosystem that's necessary yes. to, to uh, keep keep the artists going. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, I want to thank Phoebe Beasley for you're sharing her welcome. perspective. Uh, you're thank all welcome. of you out there for listening and watching, and uh, we'll look forward to the next episode. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Phoebe. Uh, thank you so much for inviting me. I really appreciate, appreciate it. it.